Alright, take two, uh, because somebody unplugged the microphone the last time we were recording this. Let's make sure it's good. Okay, because I don't want to record this for a third time. Yeah. So once again, welcome to Daredevil Reviews, take two. Yeah. Uh, episode four, Penny and Dime. Uh, this is the bat. this is why I hate doing retakes, it's because I ran out of steam yeah. the first time I talk about it, and it's like, I hate to repeat myself, but anyway, no, I thought this was a really phenomenally good episode, at least, like, we both kind of agree, mostly towards the ending, Yeah, it's but like, I think I liked this more episode more than you did. Yeah, and that being said, though, it's like, it was still a pretty solid episode, mm -hmm. um, like, basically this one kind of revolved around, uh, Punisher dealing with, uh, the Irish mob as they get, start to try and get their little vengeance on him. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what it is, like, between this and Jessica Jones, I feel like the things we really disagree with more than anything else are, the, oddly enough, the Marvel TV shows. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know why that is. Like, it's a weird little divide, yeah. but... <laughs> yeah. No fun. It's kind of weird, because, like... It is a little weird, because for some reason, I think I unintentionally fall in with, like, the critic crowd in terms of, like, their opinions. Mm-hmm. Even critics like this season a lot. But Actually, no. Really? Rot I, Rotten Tomatoes has got like a 75%. For critics I've read liked it a lot. But more yeah. of it made it just, again, different opinions. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. I think it's maybe just, I think you just have, like, these higher expectations than I do. <laughs> but I, that's probably just one of the main points. That, yeah, it's like, I kind of expect, I think after, like, the phenomenal nature of the first season, I expected more. But going in, I didn't realize that both Stephen DeKnight and Drew Goddard were not involved in mm -hmm. this season. It's like, had I known that, I probably would have set my expectations a little lower. <laughs> I mean, like, like... it's still really good. No, like, it's still really good. Like, even without the showrunners going into it, I think you were just ex kind of expecting more of what the first season brought into it. But yeah. this is a very different season with very different characters. Yeah. Which I'm perfectly on board with. Yeah. Uh, it's... Basically, it's kind of like what I said about Jessica Jones. Like, it's not that bad, it's just that I thought the execution was could have been better. Oh, I think Jessica Jones is phenomenal. Yeah. But... yeah. I will say I, this, though. Uh, Jessica Jones is definitely better than the second season of this. Thing. I will... I, if Jessica, I mean, I usually go, okay, fair enough. Respect to Jones' opinion. Jessica Jones is the one thing, like, no, you're fucking wrong. <laughs> I know. I know. I try not to do that, but this is one of those things, like, no, you're just wrong. And you just got to live with that. And one day you'll see. I was right the whole time. And you go, oh, my God, I had not seen it before. Then you'll have to live with those other critics who just very, very, very differently say it's only slightly better to like point one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? I didn't catch a word Sorry. of that. I was just kind of making a joke, but it's about like how the difference in terms of like scoring for Daredevil and Jessica Jones is like so minuscule. I mean, like, like no, I'm not saying it's like, I mean, in my opinion, it's better than Daredevil season one, yeah. but. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those things where, like, I know people kind of have their premises, but like, we can, like, they're both good though but like I said I think we can both agree that's well probably down the road that season two is nowhere is good compared to the like both those yeah I'll agree on that uh but that being said I still find this very enjoyable I'm back to that kind of segments back in the actual episode so uh, this one involves and uh, introduces an actual villain from the comic books uh whose name I unfortunately forget it's like it's why didn't we look that up while we, before we started the second take now that you know I don't it. know why we did either uh <laughs> But I'm gonna see if I can find like it's like Uncle yeah. Curry or something like that. It's gonna bug me now. Uh, but, but I got Apple Curry, so it's obviously about that. Uh, I'll just put comic book villain. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah, this Irish mob boss. Yeah, you talk uh, about that. I'm gonna look this up. Basically, uh, his son was killed in the first episode, and is also the guy responsible for all the money that uh, Punisher took. Basie has come down from Ireland and is a little pissed. So, lightly. he uh, decides to uh, capture the Punisher and torture him so he can until he talks. And so they eventually find <coughs> a place where the Punisher, uh, supposedly his family was killed. Yeah. I'm listening, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so while Punisher's there, kind of having a bit of a flashback, um, he gets approached... And basically, everyone tries to take him down. Like, even with serum and, or like this drug to knock him out, and like crap ton of tasers, they, uh, it takes a lot to bring him down because he is a, uh, he's a man on a warpath. As those of you who know the Punisher know. <laughs> God, this is gonna drive me crazy. I'm, I'm gonna find this motherfucker. I just, it's gonna bug the yeah. shit out of me. Huh. 
Um, meanwhile, uh... Is there even really anything... Well, you got okay. Karen trying to track yeah. down the punch. Karen's, yeah, Karen, like, based on some leads that's been going on with, like, the previous episode and the stuff she got, <coughs> she's trying to get a better understanding of who he is, so she finds his house and actually starts in a little bit of a investigation of her own. And Punisher in the or Daredevil in the meantime is trying to find out where the Punisher himself is, where he learns that, yeah, he's been kidnapped as well once he comes across the, uh basically killing spree that he kind of pulled off in self-defense, mind you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm not finding it. That's okay. I'll, if, I, if I remember like, between now and the next episode, I'll say it. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, but no, like this, it all accumulates. And like I think I said this in the last take we did. It was like, I just love... Uh, I was going to call him Shane because that's the only name I remember him by. Yeah. Uh, I just love the, what he brings to the table as far as the Punisher goes and just how goddamn intense he is in every scene he's yeah. in. Yeah. Like, even, even when he's just sitting on a damn park bench, looking at a carousel, he's still the most intense motherfucker in the room. Because <laughs> he just has, like, these dead eyes. These dead eyes. Says, I'm just gonna... I'm, I'm gonna find somebody, and I'm gonna murder them. <laughs> That's just... Uh, honestly, like, even though he's, like, a vigilante character, he's basically a serial killer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is... Pretty, it's pretty true to the comic book character. Oh, the comic book character plays more of like an antihero angle. This one's like, no, he's kind of, he's more the little psychotic. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, he can take five tasers and just be okay. He <laughs> <laughs> takes tasers and like a tranquilizer and still have to like the strength to point a gun at you. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, found him. Finn Cooley. F a Cooley. That was it. Not Curry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like uh, Uncle Finn. That's what they call him, Uncle Finn. Uh. That makes sense now. That was... Is it adventure time? It's time for you to die. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we found a way to make adventure time even darker. <laughs> that show does get pretty dark. I love that show so much. <laughs> uh, I, I just imagine like the theme, the theme song. <laughs> adventure time, come bring your friends. <laughs> we'll go to very special lands. <laughs> With Finn the mob boss and Frank the dog. <laughs> the fun will never end. Adventure time! Anyway. Yeah. That was something no. we did not do the first take. No, the dog that has that pit bull. Well, the, 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 <laughs> they didn't give the name of the dog, so it was like, yeah. eh. and Frank the sociopath. <laughs> like, somebody make that poster! <laughs> somebody make that poster! <laughs> It's like, I think we did, um, we did uh, My Big Fat Greek Wedding 2 review. Uh, we had got the trailer for Nine Lives where Kevin Spacey plays a cat. I don't want to know anymore. Let's just talk about this review. <laughs> but no, we're, then we somehow got on a tangent about what would happen if Kevin Spacey, uh, if Kevin Spacey played Cat from Cat Dog. <laughs> and I was like... It wouldn't be that much different. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, I really want some... No, I was like combining that with my image of him from like House of Cards season three, where I just want, I want one time where some I want someone to make this video where just cat dubbed over with the uh, Kevin Spacey line from season three of House of Cards. He goes, I know this is a little hard, but I want us to fucking try. <laughs> like, I just want somebody to do that. Uh, I'm sure somebody can. Uh, anyway, back to this episode though. Yeah. But no, like. But even when, like, he's being punched in the gut, like, over and over again, he just, he just, like, he doesn't flinch at all. Like, he barely moves at all. He's like, yeah, he's like, is that, he honestly takes, like, is that really the best you got? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, like, really fucking hit me. I dare you, bastard. Fucking hit me. Uh, okay, here's a drill. <laughs> yeah, that, that grossed me out when I first saw it. I mean, and, and no, the blood is obviously, like, CGI. Yeah. But at the same time, it was like, it was that I wasn't expecting it moment. It was like, oh, oh, that's unpleasant. That's not pretty. Uh... But it turns out it all accumulates because the, the Punisher had hit a razor blade under his skin for just this occasion and drags that out, cuts himself free, and proceeds to murder a bunch of folks. Uh, After he blows a bunch of other people with a bomb planted in the money that the mob boss wanted back. And who didn't see that coming? You really yeah. think the mob, mob people should have known better. Yeah. Uh, it's like, get the... Yeah, it's like... <laughs> Let's get the drone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but then again, it's like after that, Punisher breaks free, got the shotgun, just immediately starts hobbling towards the Irish guy, shoots somebody, uh, someone else on the side, and then shoots him in the face. After he responds, "Who killed my family?" I'm like, who your killed? family? Who fucking cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Faith in me, Gorda, you son of a bitch. Oh, <laughs> 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 however that phrase goes. Uh, I probably just pissed off some Irish people. I think it was Faith in Begora. Thank you, that was it. Alright, but anyway, and then that, that accumulates in like a Daredevil Punisher team up, and they kick some ass together, although Daredevil just des like swatting every lethal weapon out yeah. of his hand, like, no, no, don't do nope, that. Nope. <laughs> okay, let me just shoot him. No, you're not gonna do that. Fine, I'll grab this hammer. No! You're, you're, you're breaking my balls here, man. <laughs> Starts punching somebody. Yeah. It's like that. Just for that, I'm gonna break his balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that scene in uh, Deadpool where the like, girl's like, you kind of throw me in a box here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was another movie I really loved. That's a whole other thing. Yeah. Uh, was it the best movie ever? No, but it was everything we wanted from a Deadpool movie. Again, that was that was another case where I loved it. I liked it more than you did. Uh, no, I really liked it. It's just as I said, it's like enjoyment and. Overall quality are kind of two different things, but I enjoyed the shit out of that mm -hmm. movie enough to watch it like three times in a matter of a week. I think I did too, actually. <laughs> yeah. Although, granted, I was also doing an experiment like with different projection methods because <laughs> yeah, I was checking like the IMAX, mm -hmm. uh, the Dolby Cinema, mm -hmm. and regular. But yeah, like all this entire episode, going back to this though, because we do have other things we want to get done today, and I, I want to have to record this a third time, Grant. But anywho, it all accumulates in this uh, scene where Deadpool, like a Deadpool, <laughs> <laughs> Punisher. It's happened before. Uh, have you seen, there's actually a great comic book panel where uh, Deadpool is like fighting Daredevil for whatever reason, and like Deadpool like flips over and like sticks something to his back, and he's like, "Well, you've ever watched some of that bomb that stuck to your back?" And then there's a pause, and, De and Daredevil goes. That's a cassette da uh, tape with duct tape on it. And he goes, it is. But for a second there, you were really worried. <laughs> yeah. No, I can just imagine it's like, it's got Millie Vanilli in there, so it's still a bomb. Ah, ha, ah, ha, ha, Oh. Okay, anywho. But anyway, no, Daredevil basically is this long, long soliloquy, basically, about his own past and, like, what like what accumulated him becoming the Punisher and stop looking at IGN. We're recording, damn it. Sorry, it's just, I'm shocked. Always Sunny got renewed for seasons 13 and 14. Don't trust anything today. Why would you trust any news article that's released today? Right, it's April Fool's. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> at the same time, though, I... I it's it's, I, it's, I, it's I, entirely I, possible. But. Yeah, that's what I think. Like, you know what? That... I'm not surprised, given that pe that show is so popular for some reason. I like how you had to stop the urge of saying piece of shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not a fan of either, but hey, back yeah. to the show, back to this, we're, we're getting way off track here. Yeah. Uh, but, so it leads into this, this, quite frankly, like, the best speech the show has ever yeah. had, and I almost feel like it's the entire reason they decided, brought Punisher in for this season, was, like, somebody wrote this incredible speech, and, like, we have to find a way to yeah. justify putting this in here. And if, if, honestly, if I found out that was the reason for a lot of the choices this season, I'd be 100% okay with it. Because this is, speech is like, and the performance given with it, it's honestly more the performance in the written speech that is like easily the best thing the show has done so far. Yeah. In definitely. my opinion. Uh, like, it's, it's like right up there with the Kingpin's, you know, I, I don't know how to pray speech from season one. Yeah. Which, which is like, my, I think, my favorite speech of that season. Uh, but uh, and it just, it's, the way he tells him, the way he just, like, you could tell he just visualizing it perfect in his head, and he just starts breaking out into tears. Yeah, talking about basically what happened when he came back from war, meeting his family, and, like, kind of leading up to the day that, mm -hmm. like, his family died. Just kind of, like, the regrets he had about not... Mm -hmm. reading her story but the day before she yeah. ended up dying. Well, even then, how he's just describing, like, how she, like, it's the joy and the pain that comes exactly with it. Like, when he's yeah. talking about how, uh... He, can't, he, like, visited his daughter at her school, and she immediately, like, ran up to him, at, like, when he got home from the no, war. I thought, no, I think it was his wife, because his wife was teaching. Uh, maybe it was, no, like, he said it was, he said it was his daughter that was holding him up. Oh, okay, I misheard that part. I assume they were, okay. No, no, it, it was specifically about his daughter, because, like, I was saying, like, uh, before she she's running, she, they were doing yoga pose, and she immediately runs to run across in the classroom, and starts, and, like, she's in my arms, and it's like, it wasn't about his yeah. wife, though, the whole monologue was about his daughter. No, I think the opening was his wife, and then it transitioned to his daughter. Maybe, maybe. Because, like, why would a young... It's like, I don't think a daughter that young would probably be doing yoga. That sounds more like something an adult would do. Uh, no, because they were saying, like, they said it went to, like, a kindergarten or something like that. What kindergarten has her kids doing yoga? This one, apparently. Yeah, uh, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was his wife at first, then he went to the daughter. Okay, do, do, you want, do you need to, like, pause this and, like, resolve this right now? No, let's just get this damn thing over, <laughs> Well, I want to know now, because it's going to bug me. 
Uh, so watch every, whatever yeah. video we do next. We'll yeah. just watch, watch it. Go, it. Ha! I was right. Yeah. Uh, you bastard. Yeah, at least I was actually watching this. You were yeah. too busy doing your other thing. Anywho. Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> Shit. Sh Back yeah. to Wikipedia. <laughs> uh, anywho. So, no, like that scene, like, and of course it brings up another point that uh, honestly has not been from any Marvel product so far in the fact that the police officers really have no authority or say in anything that goes on, like, has no authority anymore in the Marvel yeah. Universe, because uh, everything's done by superheroes. That's usually the case in almost any superhero thing, though. True, but it's nice to see it actually brought up. That's my point with it. It's, it's not exactly new territory, but it's like, okay, somebody's at least addressing it. Yeah. Uh, like, someone's actually saying, like, hey, you know, because you guys, no one's afraid of us anymore. No one respects our authority anymore. And <laughs> he's like, do you realize what a gigantic problem that creates for us? And it's a valid point. Yeah. It's a perfectly valid point. So that's why it makes it a big deal in the Daredevil, like, is, lets the police officer know, like, oh, no, no, you take credit for taking the Punisher down. It can't be me, because people have to know that police uh, the police system has to work. Yeah. So, like, I really like that. I mean, like, yeah. like I said, yeah, it's very reminiscent of, like, uh, the Dark, Dark Knight. Knight. Yeah, like, I got that vibe, too. But then, like, season one, the season one finale totally had a Batman Begins vibe to it, too. Yeah. Um... Uh, <laughs> but, like, I thought, uh, it was still well done, though. It was still well done. Uh, and then, of course, we got Elektra at the very end, which we've talked about a little bit beforehand, so I got, I really don't have much more to add without going to the future episodes. Uh, other than I think I like her character more than you did, which is fine. Yeah. I get it. But, uh, yeah, I think that's all I can think of that we haven't discussed already, so. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, uh, I think I mentioned this before, too. Uh, we are recording quite a few videos today, so we got to see it scattered throughout. We also got a Star Wars Rebel DVD and a Spectacular Spider-Man DVD. I'm almost tempted to make this a timed exclusive on Patreon, but I haven't decided yet. Uh, but either way, we're going to watch some of this shit later today, so we'll look out for those videos coming Yo. soon. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. So, let's uh, turn off the camera now and okay. see if the audio actually worked this time. Okay. See ya. Bye.